Hi, my name is Todd Berzer with Keyvolve Product Management. This is Product Management 101 and our lecture on new product development. If you remember from our past lectures, we've been looking at the work of product management spread out across four different areas. So the first is market intelligence, and this serves as the foundation for product management work. So market, customer, competitive analysis, and then strategy and strategy development for your product group. In this latest lecture, or this latest set of lectures, we've been looking at new product development. And in the last lecture, we looked at road mapping. And in this lecture, we're going to look at new product development, the actual development of a product or service. So in this lecture, we're going to look at the basics of new product development. So stage gates, agile methodology, spiral development. And then we're going to look at the product management responsibilities throughout this, this new product development. So business case, developing a value proposition, and developing your product requirements. So if we think about the process of new product development, you start off with a number of precursors, setting the background, understanding your market. So market intelligence, um, strategy, technology assessment, so the, the understanding the work with your R&D counterparts, uh, in particular work that they do to understand where the technology that you're working with is headed, what's its forecast, and what your own company's position is with that technology. And then innovation ideas that you would have picked up from a number, or your team would have picked up from a number of areas. This in turn leads to road mapping, which you remember are time-based charts that show the evolution of a product or service. That in turn, once you've developed a road map, you know where you want to head, then you're picking out particular products and services to go ahead and move into new product development. That's the blue circle. And once you've developed those products, then they go out to launch. That's the process of new product development, but I want to introduce the concept of stage gates, which Robert Cooper and some others uh, developed. And this idea of stage gates, and you might be doing something similar in your company, you might, you know, it might be called stage gates, it might be called something else, but it's really a structured process to move from through this product development cycle. And it divides up the, the process of new product development into stages and gates. So stages are where the work happens. They are the new, where new product or service development process happens. Those are the stages and those are the phases. And then we go to the gates, and those are checkpoints, management reviews, where the product development, is, where your product development is reviewed. You might, uh, your management team might make a go-ahead decision or a kill decision. They might prioritize versus other projects, and they're going to approve resources or not for you to move to the next stage. That's an overview of the stage gates process. And it does divide up into these five different areas. So the first is the first stage is, a, is the scoping stage. And in this, in this, in scoping, in that phase, what you will do is you, uh, what you're, you and your team will be doing is that you will be doing desk work. You're gonna be doing fairly low investment work to take a product or service that was on your roadmap and go ahead and define that out a bit further to make sure that the market is there, to make sure the technology can do what you want it to do. That's the scoping phase. Then you move into a business case phase where you get much more serious about understanding your market needs, about developing prototypes, about mapping out your technology and your, and your development plan. That's the business case phase. Then you move to full-on development, testing, and launch. So it's an organized, manageable process from idea to launch. Now, unfortunately, if your development process depends on the product or service that you're developing, if it takes you know a year, two years to develop, um, this process can be a little rigid or linear. It depends how it's how it's applied. So there may be market changes from the, the time that you initially make the, the scoping and go through the business case phase. There may be market changes that you need to respond to. There may be new competitors that come up. So this process can be a little rigid, a little linear. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some agile methodology to this to increase the flexibility and responsiveness. So let's take a look at agile methodology. Um, if you're developing software, if you're a product manager for software, you're going to be very familiar with this. Uh, if you are not developing software, if you're doing chairs, or if you're doing you know, the new, new color laser copier or whatever, um, you may not be familiar with this one. The origins for Agile are custom software development, uh, so developing software for a particular client or customer, and this was in turn influenced by uh, lean manufacturing principles. And it's built on the principle, and I think you'll understand, that customers do not know what they want until they can see it or experience it. And the philosophy behind Agile 
you know, it really focuses on communication as opposed to deep processes and complex tools. It focuses on prototypes, getting prototypes out in front of customers so that you can do that customer collaboration, and it responds to change during the development cycle. These, this is Agile methodology, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply Agile thinking to the StageGates process, and we're going to develop something called spiral development. So spiral development applies these Agile concepts, which lots of great ideas here, to products and services beyond software. All right, so let's talk about this concept of spiral development. With spiral development, the path from concept to launch includes multiple iterations with potential customers. So you're sharing ideas, you're sharing prototypes, you're getting their feedback, and then from that feedback, you revise your, your thinking. So just to think about that in more concrete terms, let's talk about the business case. So when you're in the business case phase, you're likely going to do your ethnographic research. So you're going to go to your customers, you're going to sit with their potential customers, you're going to sit with them, you're going to understand their needs, their requirements, their environment. That's just kind of basic research. So that's the first iteration, that's the first loop, that's the first spiral. Then you're going to go back and develop more of your business case and then and work with your technology partners, your R&D team to develop out your product concepts a little bit more. And then you're going to take that first product concept, that product idea, and do some concept testing with your customers. Maybe you take it back out to them, your potential customers. You get their ideas, their thinking. So would this help you? How does this feel? Does this meet your needs? So you share whatever format you can do with your prototypes. If it's software, you can develop something pretty pretty you can you can develop something pretty good. If it's hardware, if you're developing some other kind of product, maybe you can develop a real prototype, maybe you just have to put it on paper. So that's the idea is that you continue to go to your customers, you share these prototypes, and then you come back and you revise your thinking. You go back out with new prototypes, new ideas. Again, you're kind of doing this in a customer collaborative fashion. So it's really kind of a uh, an involve, revolve, evolve process. So you involve your customers, you revolve your thinking, and you evolve your product. That's, sp that's spiral development. And let's think about your role as a product manager in spiral development. So you're going to be working collaboratively, can I say it? Collaboratively with your technical teams, and you are it's your role to be the champion for the customer. You are the customer expert. You want everybody on your team to understand the market, understand customer needs, but you're gonna be the expert. You're gonna be the representative for your customers uh, in, in the product development process. You also need to understand your competition so that you know how you're defining and getting to your own competitive advantage for your product or service. You're gonna be developing the business case. We'll talk about that in a second. You're also gonna be focusing your teams on the value proposition. We'll talk about that one as well. And then you're going to be guiding the product requirements. You're going to develop your go-to-market plans. You're going to price the product. You're going to prepare the product for launch. That's your role in spiral development. So we're going to focus on, in these next few slides, we're going to be focusing on uh, kind of developing the business case, focusing your teams on the value proposition, and guiding your product requirements. So let's start with the business case. So the business case or the product plan or the new product plan or the business plan, you know, your company might be using some slightly different terms. And the purpose of the business case, it's an investment proposal for a new product or service. And the timing is such that you build this over time. You don't do it all in one step. You build it over time. You're going to do a first pass in the scoping phase as part of the stage gates process. And then you're going to do a more detailed version in the business case stage. And it's going to look something like this. And again, it's, it's kind of layered. You're going to start with the, uh, with the business case at a, at a first pass during the scoping phase. You're going to get more detailed in the business case phase. You're going to be talking kind of in five sections. So the first is strategy, kind of fit within your roadmap. How does it fit? What are your program objectives? What's the timeline for your project? You're going to be developing it over this period and introducing it at this time. Then what are your market, uh, what's the market segment you're going after, what, are the, what does your target customer look like, what are their needs, and what's the competitive environment. And then the value proposition, the product requirements, and your competitive differentiation. And then your launch plans. Now you're going to get more detailed about your launch plans as you go along, but in these first phases of your business case, you should spell out at least the initial outline of your channel, who you're going to be selling through, 
what's your positioning on the product, what's your initial go-to-market plans. And then finally, the financials. What's your pricing, what's your forecast, what's your revenue, what's your profit. And in some companies, this last section, the Section 5, is the business case. We're, we're using the term business case a little more broadly to include all five elements. So this is the business case. You'll be developing mostly uh, this in the business case stage. Part of the business case includes a value proposition. And a value proposition is a simple statement that clarifies the customer value that your product or service is bringing to them and your competitive differentiation. And it's used to guide your technical teams to design a product uh, that meets the market requirements. That's going to give you a competitive advantage in the market. And typically the timing of your value proposition, you do this at the end of the, the scoping phase. And you can use a format like this. Again, target customer and key benefit. So this product, you know, for this particular target customer who needs to state your customer need, our product or service provides this benefit and your competitive differentiation, it provides this benefit unlike your main competition. You know, our product or service, you know, does this, you know, your main competitive differentiator as evidenced by, you know, a proof point. So, so follow this format or a similar format to make sure that you get your target customer, your key benefit, your competitive differentiation, and do this intelligently. It's easy to fill out these sentences um, at kind of a quick level, but, but really the, the, the art of product management is developing things like this, using a format like this to develop a value proposition that really hits home, that really provides strong customer benefit uh, and competitive differentiation. That's value proposition. Let's move on. In the next few slides, we're going to look at product requirements. So as a product manager, you will be looked to to help define product requirements for your new product or service. This, your product requirements, your customer requirements, again, there, there can be different terms in different companies, your market requirements document. These can be used, these are used to guide your technical teams to create a product or service that meets your customer needs and a strong competitive differentiation. Or in other words, you're designing a product or service that meets your value proposition. Now the timing, you know what, you want at least 70% of your product requirements decided up front in your business case phase and 30% or less that you decide and make changes along the way during the development phase. And the content, in terms of content and process, you should really be focusing on communication instead of long documentation. This is agile methodology. We talked about this early, earlier as a spiral development. Instead of doing you know, a 30-page product requirements document, as some companies do, as some product managers do, do a two-page document and spend an afternoon talking to your research and development counterparts. You want to identify the needs and benefits that this product is going to meet, your customer needs and the, and the benefits that it will supply, your product or service will supply. You're going to be less focused as a product manager. You're less focused on the how. Let your research and development teams, your technical teams, uh, let them determine how you meet those customer needs and benefits. And just as a, another note, if you can get some kind of prototype, especially if you're doing software, this is easier in software, but if you can get some kind of high fidelity prototype, um, these are some of the best customer requirement documents, as it were, because you can just show people exactly what you want. So product requirements, let's think a little bit more about this, because as a product manager, you're going to need to translate user needs into product requirements. Let's go back to the Kano model, which we had talked about earlier. This is a nice way of looking at user needs. You can use these. You've done the work, you know, you did the work earlier on this. You can use these to define and help decide on your product requirements. So let's go through it. So starting at the bottom, the basic needs that come out of your, your research and your Kano model analysis, these, remember the basic needs are the must be requirements. You just have to do them. So include these in your product requirements. There's really no choice. And then there's performance needs that we had talked about earlier. So these are in terms of quality, speed, uh, price. These are all performance needs. So in this case, you want to decide on the right set at the right level. You look at all your performance needs and you say, we're going to be superior than our competitors on these three performance needs. We're going to be on par with these two. And we're going to, be, we're going to allow ourselves to be behind on these other two. So you need to look at your performance needs intelligently, pick the right set, the right mix, to meet your value proposition and develop a competitive differentiation. And then finally, attractive needs. These are the delighters. These are things that customers didn't expect. Maybe your competitors aren't doing these at all. Pick one or two of these 
include them in your product just for you know customer delight and, and some competitive differentiation. This is a way to translate from the kind of your user needs using the Kano model into product requirements. So that's spiral development. So spiral development, remember we're going from kind of concept to launch with multiple iterations with customers. You're going to share ideas. You're going to, you're going to involve your customers. You're going to revolve your thinking. You're going to evolve your product. That's spiral development. But I'm not going to joke around. This is not simple. This is not easy. And as we've mentioned before at Keyvolve Product Management, we are firm believers in this idea of a flipped classroom. So you can take lectures online like this. You can learn the concepts. But then you really need to go back to your, your company, to your work, work team, and really work this out. Kind of work it with your specific business situation. It's hard work. Uh, I'm going to offer you, I mean, we can help if you would like, if it's helpful. Uh, we do training. We do customized training at Kivala Product Management. We do workshops. We can help you work through these concepts and apply them to your specific team situation for spiral development. We do consulting and we do coaching. Let's review the concepts of this lecture. So we talked about the stage gates process, which is an organized, manageable process for new product development. We talked about spiral development with those frequent customer iterations. We talked about the role of product management during spiral development, and then it's a very large and critical role and then your key deliverables. We talked through some of your key deliverables, the business case, the value proposition, and the product requirements. So with that, let's wrap up this lecture. Our next lecture is on launch, and I will talk to you then.